Here are some true stories about Bill Gates. Number 12. The Real Bill Gates Bill Gates and the late Paul Allen may forever be synonymous in the tech world, but that doesn't mean everything ran smoothly. They're credited as the creators of Microsoft, but there's a lot more to their relationship than just that. Supposedly, there's a whole other side to Bill Gates we just don't know. We've always heard Bill Gates' side of the story, but Paul Allen wanted to let the world know that he was the real idea man behind it all. In Allen's autobiography, Idea Man, he went on to explain how he was the person who came up with the idea for a piece of software that would create personal computers. That was the software BASIC, and it made personal computing user-friendly. But supposedly, Bill was against the idea because he felt that they would need more advanced hardware for that. According to Allen, it was also him, not Gates, who ultimately came up with the name Microsoft. But of course, it was Bill who made the name popular, making people believe the company's name was his idea. Paul Allen was excited to be the nerdy tech guy, and Bill was excited to be the business guy, so it was a good fit the way they worked together. But according to Paul Allen, there were a lot of not-so-positive sides of Bill, such as Bill was a sore loser in chess. He'd apparently get angry when he was losing and just knock all the pieces to the floor. The worst for Allen was the way Bill tried to maximize the money for himself. Allen claimed that Bill said it wouldn't be right for him to get half. Bill reasoned that because he did almost everything on BASIC, the split should be 60-40 in his favor. Gates then renegotiated the terms of their partnership to give himself 64-36. As the final insult, Allen overheard Bill discussing with Steve Ballmer how to dilute Allen's equity in the company. Gates was complaining that Allen was extremely unproductive and he shouldn't even be getting what he was getting. Well, Paul Allen had a very good reason though. He was missing a lot of work because he was fighting cancer at the time. For what it's worth, Bill Gates went to claim that Paul Allen's account doesn't match his own. Number 11. C cubed. What else did Paul Allen reveal in his book? We all know Bill Gates' sheer determination was one of the biggest reasons that determined Microsoft's success. Gates would work until his body would stop and he would crash on the carpet in the middle of his office. And this started at an early age. Allen revealed that during their work-filled weekends, they would find time to go to a dumpster. Why exactly? Well, in high school, Gates and Allen honed their programming skills on a mini computer owned by a local company, C Cubed. But as students, they didn't have access to as much information as the company's employees. That obviously frustrated them. So at night, Allen would help Gates step into the dumpster and start looking around for computer printouts that would help the company get information and a literal leg up. The idea was that if they were able to get some sort of indication of how earlier operating systems worked, they would get clues on what they needed to work on to develop better technology. Back in those days, using the computer wasn't exactly free. They also had to pay for time to use the computer. As the charges mounted up for their computer time in high school, Gates and Allen began looking for a way to access one of the free accounts at c -Cube. They somehow got access to an administrator password and used it to steal the company's internal accounting file. They were hoping to decrypt the file to get access to one of the free accounts, but they eventually got caught. Number 10. License Plate Checks Although Bill Gates is seen as an approachable tech billionaire, his employees probably tell a different story about a different Bill back in the day. What defines Bill's success is a relentless drive and fixation on making sure productivity levels remained high. He was known for pulling all-nighters all the time. He also didn't believe in time off on weekends or in vacations. During the first years of Microsoft, he resorted to what many people may consider unorthodox measures to make sure his employees were being as productive as they could be. He used to memorize his employees' license plates so he would know when people came to work. And this wasn't just on the weekdays. This was also on the weekends. This is definitely motivation to take public transportation or maybe ride a bike to work because would you want to be monitored by your boss like this? As if that weren't enough. After employees would put in long hours to finish a special project, Bill would just ask them to start another one immediately. Of course, his relentless drive wasn't met without resistance. Apparently, even some of the most passive employees would start pushing back, telling him that they weren't going to work insane hours. Also, he would have meetings with top managers just to make sure they were in control of their projects. Bill would ask harder and harder questions to his managers until they admitted that they didn't know, and then Bill would yell at them on purpose for being unprepared. These aren't exactly the best ways of being a leader, but what's undeniable was that Bill's drive and demanding personality were what ultimately pushed Microsoft to the top of the tech business for decades. Number 9. Lawyer Bill? 
being a notoriously smart boy from an early age, it came as no surprise that Bill Gates' trajectory was set up to be a highly successful one. Although he displayed a strong interest for computers and programming in his high school years, he didn't go straight into computers right away. His dad was William Henry Gates Sr., a prominent Seattle attorney. You can see why it would have been understandable that Bill's dad wanted Bill to have the same career path as his first option. His dad was a prominent member of Preston Gates and Ellis, one of America's largest law firms. Bill was accepted into Harvard pre-law, which is practically a guarantee for a successful career in the judicial system. Is there a Bill Gates arguing cases before the Supreme Court in another dimension? Obviously in this universe, Bill didn't find it to be quite like that. He couldn't help but run through Harvard's most challenging math and computer science courses. After two years, he put law and Harvard on pause altogether to work on his first software venture for MITS, an American electronics company that manufactured calculators and personal computers. Two years later, he finally dropped out with a clear aim on founding his long-desired software company. Number 8. Trafo Data Did you think Microsoft was his first company? Nope. Bill has been a visionary from an early age. With this in mind, Gates co-founded Trafo Data with Paul Allen during the summer break right before Harvard. The idea was to basically find a way to read traffic data and then provide it to traffic engineers to interpret. Basically, they created a mini computer to track the flow of traffic. Although that sounds incredibly boring, it is very useful to cities wanting to know where to place new traffic signals or stop signs or make road repairs. Although the idea seemed to be quite useful for any city, it wasn't received with the resounding applause they had expected. They worked nonstop for two years and invested around $1,500. That was a lot of money at the time, especially for someone who just graduated from high school. However, Gates and Allen found that their product just wasn't anything people nor governments were interested in. After six years and almost 3500 bucks later, it proved to be a failure. But although the company did not take off, the experience did give real contributions to Bill and Paul in the software programming skills they gained. Of course, they went on to create Microsoft right after Trafodata's failure to launch. Number 7. Strong Like Bull For any entrepreneur, life's pretty rough in the beginning. Bill Gates wasn't a stranger to this reality. His work schedule was so demanding, he had virtually no time to even eat something. He says his incessant drive is what ultimately allowed him to achieve what he achieved. Bill has publicly acknowledged many of the tricks he would use back then to keep his workflow going without any type of distraction, food included. This meant working all day long and not worrying about whether or not he's had dinner. How did he get enough energy to work without food? Bill's secret to his almost never-ending source of energy? Tang. Yep, the famous orange instant drink that first came out in the late 50s in powdered form. If you don't remember, this was the same drink that astronauts would take with them on space missions back in the 60s. And that was Bill's power source during those long coding sessions. And he would spare himself the hassle of mixing it in water. This kind of reminds us of dolphins who would poke pufferfish just for their toxins. Find out more in this video right here. Apparently, he would go as far as just licking it off his hands. He made the argument that the human body already had plenty of water. He admitted that his face, hands, and keyboard would all be covered in orange dust. That's uh, something we definitely wouldn't do in this day and age. Number six, knighthood. Bill is known for how smart he is when it comes to technology, but did you know that he is also a knight? You probably already know that Bill is a big uh, philanthropist through the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. He and his wife have managed to donate billions of dollars to help make the world a better place. His contributions have been important for the development of third world countries that have to deal with many problems we don't face anymore. One very special person took interest in what he was doing, Queen Elizabeth. Through the United Kingdom's foreign office, the Queen decided to award Gates with an honorary title not many people have had the pleasure to receive the Knight Commander of the Order of the British Empire. This is a title awarded to citizens that are believed to provide great contributions to the British people. You're probably saying, but wait, Bill Gates is American. Well, that's true, but Microsoft has operating offices in the UK and it directly employs almost 3,000 people in England. Queen Elizabeth has said that she's not too big into typing on computers, but she does somewhat still embrace technology. She sent her first email way back in 1976, with some help, of course. However, she was way late to Instagram. Her first post was only back in March of 2019. Although Bill is now a knight of the British crown, he's actually not allowed to be called Sir, since this is only reserved for actual British citizens. Number five, worst game ever. 
Did you know Bill Gates wrote the first game ever made for a personal computer? In 1980, he was able to convince tech giant IBM that Microsoft had the best operating software for IBM's new personal computer. Well, the problem was, Bill lied. Microsoft didn't have any operating system in development at the time. So what did he do? He bought an operating system from a small startup and just repackaged it to IBM for $430,000. As part of the deal, though, IBM wanted the operating system to come with a programming language for beginners called BASIC, along with a few games to show off how it worked. After long hours of brainstorming and coding, Gates and Neil Konzen came up with a very simple game called Donkey.Base. It was a very simple driving game. So simple to the point that you can't steer, brake, or accelerate. All you can do is just avoid donkeys by pressing the spacebar. The player basically drives in order to avoid donkeys. Does the logic even make sense? Their competitor, Apple, bought an IBM PC in 1981 in order to dissect and spy on Microsoft's work. Once they got a hold of the donkey game, they didn't hold back on the review. Apple employee Andy Hertzfeld reported to Steve Jobs that the graphics of the game were extremely bad, along with the entire concept of the game. He was amazed at the fact that, with how bad the game was made, why Bill Gates even bothered to write that he was a co-author of the game within the game itself. Number 4. Class Games Bill Gates is easily one of the most notorious college dropouts in the U.S. But there's a little secret Bill Gates had to keep to himself for years. Not only did he just drop out of Harvard, but he also didn't actually attend any of his classes. However, that doesn't mean that he never went to class because he did. He just never went to his scheduled classes. He basically made up a little game for himself just to make things fun. The classes that he actually signed up for, he never went to class. He just took the exams. And for classes he did not sign up for, he always went to class. Is it any surprise that he managed to score A's in most of the classes he registered for? And of course, Gates being who he is, was consistently among the most vocal students at the class he wasn't supposed to be at. How did he get mostly A's? He would just study extra hard during Harvard's reading period, the extra time when students would prepare for their exams. Bill revealed his secret during a Ask Me Anything session he did on Reddit. People were able to ask him all sorts of questions regarding his life, business, and early years. When he was asked what his fondest memory was at Harvard, that's when he went on and spilled the beans on his secret of playing his own little game that he made. Although Gates has proved he's one of the most successful people in the world, he's still human. He wasn't able to get an A in organic chemistry. He had to settle for a C+. Number 3. Office Romance Major corporations tend to have policies on disclosing romantic relationships, and any relationship between direct supervisors and a subordinate is almost always strictly prohibited. But despite the risks, office romances do happen. Bill and his wife Melinda were not an exception. Melinda Gates, formerly Melinda French, was working as a product marketing manager at Microsoft. They met in 1987, four months into her job at Microsoft, when they sat next to each other at a work dinner in New York. It seems like they didn't quite hit it off right away, because they both went their separate ways that same night. A few months later, they reconnected when they bumped into each other at the Microsoft parking lot. Bill asked her to go on a date with him, except his problem was that he asked her to go out a whopping two weeks later. Melinda basically told him he wasn't spontaneous enough for her and said no. An hour later, Bill called her asking if this move was spontaneous enough and they went out for dinner. This is how they started a very discreet romance that went on for a couple of years. Long story short, in 1994, they got married in Hawaii. Number 2. Class Schedules Who knew Bill always had a thing for the ladies? Back in 1967, Bill was still in high school and met Paul Allen. They became a known pair because of their shared interest in computers. Once their school knew of their ability to do coding, they started to give them some work, but Bill saw an opportunity and took it. They hacked into the school's computers and scheduled Bill in classes that were supposed to be all girls. Unfortunately for Paul Allen, he was two years ahead of Bill, and he was already off to college by then. Although it was a fantastic idea, Gates has publicly acknowledged that he wasn't able to take advantage. He apparently just wasn't social enough back then, and that was something he would carry with him to Harvard to his regret. Number 1. Leadfoot Surprise, surprise, Bill Gates actually has been arrested before, and not just once but he's actually been arrested twice, although it wasn't for anything major. The first time happened back in 1975 when he allegedly ran a stop sign in his hometown of Medina, Washington. 
Gates was then pulled over by a cop who had been sitting right in front of the sign out of sight. Several reports say Gates started acting verbally aggressive, and that's when the cop decided to arrest him. Bill was arrested again in 1977 for reckless driving. It happened in New Mexico, where he was pulled over for speeding, running a stop sign, and driving without a license. However, all these stories haven't been exactly confirmed by Bill Gates himself, so some of the details are probably a little fuzzy. But the mugshot is real. In 2008, Gates appeared in a Microsoft ad with Jerry Seinfeld, where Jerry runs into Bill at a fake shoe store called Shoe Circus. At one point in the commercial, Bill shows the salesperson his membership card for Shoe Circus, and Bill used his mugshot as the photo on his membership card. 